modern computers is very important, and even more so for hypervisors like Proxmox VE, because if something goes wrong, it will likely affect all of the virtual computers that have been run on that one physical computer. Now, an interesting open source combination of monitoring tools that is available for free is Prometheus and Grafana. But how do you configure Prometheus and Grafana to monitor Proxmox VE if you're running them in Docker, for instance? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, because this video is specifically about monitoring Proxmox VE, I'm going to assume that you already have Prometheus and Grafana installed, or you know how to set these up. If not, then I do have another video which shows you how to install and configure these in Docker. Now, although Prometheus is relying on an exporter to get its metrics, we're not going to be installing any additional software on our Proxmox VE nodes. Instead, we're going to rely on Proxmox's API. In which case, the first thing we need to do is to set up a user account and an API token that our exporter can use. So to do that, we go to Data Center, and then underneath Permissions, we click on Users. Then we'll click on Add. You can call this whatever it is you like. I'm going to call this one Prometheus but I would suggest using something less obvious than that name. And then you can fill in the rest of the details if you like, but then click Add. Next thing we need to do is to assign permissions. So we click permissions and then click on the Add drop-down menu and select User Permission. For the path, we'll select the forward slash because we're monitoring everything basically. For the user, we'll just click on that drop-down menu and select the user account that we created. Then for the rule, we'll click on that drop-down menu We'll scroll down until we find PDE Auditor, and we'll select that, and then we'll click on Add. Next thing to do is to set up the API token that we're going to use, because you might have noticed when we create that account, we weren't asked to assign an actual password anyway. So we'll select API Tokens, we'll then click on Add. We need to change the user from root to the account that we've just created. You can put what you like in for the token ID, but I'm just going to call this one Exporter. Now, one key thing to point out is this privilege separation, which by default is enabled. You do want to disable that, because if you enable that, it means you've got separate permissions for the actual user account and separate permissions for the actual token. We just want to keep things simple. We've already assigned permissions for the actual user account. So by disabling this, it means we get the same permissions regardless. Uh, money's not going to make any difference because nobody's going to actually log in to this actual um, computer system using that account, so I don't need separate per per permissions anyway. Now, from a security perspective, it does make se uh, sense to actually set an expiry date, and to do that, you can click on the, uh, the calendar option here. Typically, when you set up uh, tokens, they usually expire after maybe 30 days or roughly a month, so I'm just going to jump forward a month and I'm going to pick to the end of this uh, month in September, for example. The only drawback of that is it means you do have to actually maintain the actual token going forward. I mean, what you can do is you can actually just keep extending the expiry date if you like, which is quite useful. The only thing you actually need to bear in mind though, is that although that means you don't have to actually then update the actual exporter with a new token, it does mean that if there's ever a breach, you're not aware of it and someone's got access to that token well they'll still be able to get access to the system so there's different ways of managing this but i would suggest from a, an actual security perspective at least setting some expiry date that's practical in any case what we then need to do is click on add then what that does is to give you what the token id is so it's basically the name uh, at palm then an exclamation mark followed with the actual token id it's easy to get that back again and uh, recreate it. The only problem is the secret that it actually shows you. This is extremely important. You don't want anybody seeing this. And this is a one-off uh, view that you're going to see. You need to copy this down uh, and store it somewhere safe going forward because that's it. It, it. As soon as I click on that close button here, it's gone. I won't be able to find out what this is anymore. So you can either just copy and paste it like that or I click on the option to copy the secret uh, value to the uh, clipboard but again just just remember that is a, a very private um actual secret key there I, I don't mind showing it on a video because i can easily recreate this even before the video goes back out anyway so it's going to be different regardless and it is only an actual test lab anyway but 
once we've got these, we can then use those to actually set up our exporter when we configure it. Now, it's usually not a good idea to be installing third party software on a dedicated platform like a hypervisor, especially if you're relying on technical support, for instance. But fortunately, this actual uh, exporter we're going to be using can be installed in a Docker container and then it can connect remotely to our actual nodes. So because I'm going to use Docker Compose here, I'm going to edit the YAML file. So I'm going to use nano to edit docker-compose.yml. So this is already set up to run other containers. So I don't need to put in the version of the services block there, but I'm going to go right to the end. I'm just going to hit return and then copy and paste in the configuration for this exporter we're going to run. So I've given it a name of PVE-exporter and I'm pointing it to the image to use. To make things a bit easier to identify, I'm giving it a container name of PVE-exporter. And then I'm just going to stick with the default port here, which is 9221. Now, I do want this running 24 by 7, but rather than setting restart to always, I've got it set to unless dash stopped. The reason being is that I can actually manually turn the actual container off or stop it, and it won't automatically start it back up. On your hand, if the actual computer were to reboot, then the actual container would be started up. And then finally, I've got to point the actual configuration file out to an external file. So the container sees this file as being slash etsy slash pve.yml. So it's, we're going to create our own actual file, which is going to be basically in the actual folder where we've got docker-compose.yml. Uh, and then there is, I'm going to be setting up a subfolder called pve. And then I'll keep the configuration file of pve.yml in there. So I'm just going to hit return. I'm going to save and exit out of here. And then that actually gets a container set up. Now, as part of the setup of this exporter, we need to create a configuration file for it. And because I like to keep all of my config files separate, what I need to do is to actually create a separate folder for this. So I'm just going to use make dir to create a new folder called PVE. And then what we'll do is to actually create our config file. So this is called pve.yml. So this is the same path and file name that we've referenced within our Docker Compose file. So I'm going to hit return. Then I'm going to copy and paste in the actual configuration details. So right at the top, we've got default, and then we need to define our actual user account. Now, I call this user Prometheus, so you'll have to put in whatever username you use, but it's got at Pam at the end. So overall username is Prometheus at Pam. Now, we're not using a username and a password to actually connect in, we're using tokens. So I've got to define the token name. So that's the token ID that we referenced when we actually created uh, the token within Proxmox VE. But note that it's in actual quotes because it's a string here. And then I have to tell it what the token value is. So this is the actual secret that we got back when we actually created that token. Again, that's in quotes, but you have to put in here whatever it is that you, uh, you got back. Now, by default, Proxmox VE, just like other systems, is using self-signed certificates. So unless you've actually changed that and created your own certificates and you've actually got your system to actually trust them, then when it comes to this particular setup, you want to put in verify underscore SSL and set that to false. In other words, you just bypass that actual check. So same exit out of that file. And then what I want to do is to actually start up that container. So I'm just going to run docker compose up dash D. So this will basically start up any container find in that YAML file if it isn't already started, but it's going to do this in the background. So I'll hit return. Now this should be quick because I've already got the image downloaded anyway to save time. So it says that it's actually started, but I'm going to run docker PS just to make sure that it hasn't come back with any warning. So we've got our Prometheus uh, PV dash exporter right at the top there. So I'm just going to keep checking. Yep. It looks as though it's okay. It certainly hasn't been restarting. So at least that's actually now got the exporter up and running. Now, the next thing to do is to configure Prometheus itself and give it a job to actually scrape metrics from this exporter. So I need to edit the configuration file for Prometheus, which for me, it's called Prometheus.yml and it's in a folder called Prometheus. I'm then going to go to the end here and I'm going to copy and paste in the actual uh, 
configuration for this new job. Now, this configuration is based on the example that you actually get from the developer of the actual exporter itself. So it's got a job name of PVE. And then here in this static config section, we actually define the nodes that we actually want it to connect to. Uh, we've got a metrics path, some parameters here. And then right at the end, we've got the actual IP address and port that we connect to, to actually talk to the exporter. The key point about all this bit though, is that we're doing relabeling. Reason being is that we've got Prometheus actually talking to an exporter, which is on the same computer as Prometheus itself. And we're then connecting out to some external computers. So we need to do a bit of relabeling, otherwise things would get a bit confusing. So I'm just gonna hit return and save this actual file. Now, because I've changed the config file, I need to actually get Prometheus to update itself. And you could actually restart the container, but I've actually configured Prometheus to allow me to actually get it to do a reload of that config on the fly. So I can just use the curl dash X command here. So I'm gonna hit return and that gets Prometheus to reload in its config file without having to actually restart the container. But either way, I'm gonna to have to give this a bit of time now the actual system to collect metrics from our actual Proxmox nodes. Well, I've waited a while for the actual exporter to start collecting information. And I'm now on Prometheus. And if I go to status and then to targets, I've got a target here called PVE. And it's showing three of three and up, which is good to see. If I click on show more, it's actually showing me the actual details of those three actual uh, nodes that I've got it talking to. And what we can do is we can actually get details of those actual metrics. But one thing to point out is that you can't just point it at the actual IP address and the actual port uh, for the actual computer. If I put that in and just hit return, you see it actually tells you to point to a specific target. So if I change that URL and actually get it to reference one of the actual um, nodes that we've got set up here, hit return. You can see there's a whole bunch of metrics that it's actually collecting from the actual node. So that's good to see. Uh, Proxmox is talking to the actual exporter and the exporter is now actually gathering information from our actual nodes. Well, now that Prometheus is gathering metrics from our Proxmox VE nodes, the last thing to do is to set up Grafana and to create a dashboard that presents all of these actual metrics in a much more easy to understand format. Now, you can create your own dashboard in Grafana if you like to, but there are actual dashboards that other people have created that you can take advantage of. This one here, Proxmox via Prometheus, is one that's actually suggested by the actual developer of the exporter. So we're gonna be using this. So what we need to do is click on copy ID to clipboard, then go over to Grafana. We'll click on the menu option, select dashboards, and then on the new drop down menu, we'll select import, and then we're going to paste in the actual ID, and then click on load. You can change the name if you like, but either way, we've got to select the data source, which is Prometheus, and then click on import. And then what that gives us is a much more easier way to understand all of the metrics that are being pulled in. And there's, there's quite a lot of good information in here. I mean, you've got network information, disk, uh, IO and so on. We've got our CPU history and memory utilization that's going on as a whole. Bear in mind, what, what we're seeing here is information cluster wide as opposed to individual nodes. Even though we've got three nodes to choose from, the result's going to be the same no matter what you pick because to be as efficient as possible, that's what's actually going on is we're connecting in and gathering information from the cluster as a whole. But we're getting a breakdown here. It's actually telling you about uh, your virtual machines that you're running, how they're doing and so on. So this to me is a, a much, much easier way to actually monitor something like Proxmox VE. And it presents it in a pretty good format, I must admit. It's straight away, it's right there showing you exactly what your utilization uh, details are. Not only just like for the, for the whole cluster, but you can go right down to the actual individual virtual machine. If you're running containers, you can get that information as well. So definitely a useful way to actually monitor your Proxmox VE cluster. 
Well, hopefully, as you'll see, setting up this monitoring for Proxmox VE is fairly straightforward. At the time recording, the exporter is still being maintained, which is also very good to know. But it provides us with a way to monitor a Proxmox VE cluster. Now, aside from centralizing all of your devices under one monitoring solution, with some additional work, you'll be able to set up alerts within Prometheus to notify you if problems occur. So, all in all, this is a great monitoring solution to have for Proxmox VE. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button, because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.